I want to do this talk on what I call the law of paradigm diffusion. The law of paradigm diffusion basically states that one, you can only comprehend and see the paradigm that you're in and that you're only interested in a paradigm that is next to you. In the sense interested, what I mean by willing to explore. If you are more than one step away from the paradigm, you may find a curiosity. You may um, keep your eyes open or, or open to discussion, but you won't, ex won't be willing to change. Now, the only way to move from one paradigm to another is with information and also with references. A reference is someone that you trust that also believes in this paradigm. So depending on um, the references you have uh, will determine the validity of the, uh, of, the, of the paradigm. So to give you an example of this, um, you could think of, um, um, let's say, global warming. Just 10 years ago, global warming would have been what I would call in its innovative stage. The innovative stage basically is a grassroots stage that is the pre-acceptance. Um, there are basically four stages, or five stages, let me correct myself, to the paradigm. Innovation stage, which is trying to figure it out, and there are grassroots leaders in this stage. Um, you know, Hansen would be an example of one of the innovators of global uh, climate change. Um, the next stage is what's called early adapters, and then what happens is you get enough individuals that uh, you know um, that will that will change because of the innovators right they're looking at these innovators to change uh, and if an innovator that they respect ultimately accepts it then they accept it and what happens it becomes this kind of dominoes effect the next stage away from what I call early adapters is the early majority the early majority basically where climate change right now is in early majority stage. It was, you know, I would say a couple, about, I don't know, two, three years ago it was in the early adapter stage, but it just moved over to early majority. It hasn't moved over to the next stage, which is late majority, okay? And finally, the last stage of the paradigm is what I call the laggards. And the laggards, the paradigm laggards, basically will probably, you know, regardless of who believes or whatever, they will deny it, all right? Some will come over, but the vast majority of them, you know, if they saw death staring them in their fate, they would say, oh, it's not anything. Or, you know, the, the, the moment uh, see, you know, all the ice melts and temperature goes up, they're like, oh, it has nothing to do with climate change, it's some other factor. Those are the laggards. And they represent 16% of the population. Um, there's nothing you can do, hell or high water, to pretty much change their point of view. So, what's really exciting right now for me is because ultimately a paradigm that has just gone from the innovative stage to the early adapter stage happened this month. That paradigm is the end of growth. Now, understand it took 40 years for this paradigm to go from an innovative stage to an early adapter stage. And the, the event that made it happen is TED. Now, obviously TED 10 years ago wouldn't have made it happen, but TED has become, just like uh, everything else, TED has become now a truck. I see the truck, there's my son. Uh, TED is now basically um, a, an early majority to majority uh, late majority it's between it's nearly at the late majority I think everyone Ted is becoming a pretty much household name at this point it's definitely it's definitely in the late early majorities I don't know if it's in the late majority 
early late majority. So um, these, um, you know, it's very important that you understand that in order for you to understand a paradigm, you've got to, it's got to, you have to exist in it. Um, in order for you to want to learn a new paradigm, you have to be next to it. Um, simple as that. So the law of paradigm diffusion basically states that if you're an innovator and you're trying to create a new market, okay, you're pretty much asking investors to make a leap of faith. And something you have to understand, the last thing investors want to do is to make a leap of faith. This is why, for example, um, you know, the only reason why Google happened was that investor made a leap of faith and put $100,000. Because this, because he did, and he was a very recognized person, as an innovator making that leap of faith, the early uh, adapter investors, which follow his lead because he did it, they will follow, made the contributions, and Google launched. I'll give you another example of this. Um, you could look at uh, um, Microsoft. Microsoft pioneered software, okay, Microsoft. And um, IBM was pioneering hardware. And they did not see this thing called software ever amounting to anything. So when they were like, hey, we need this kind of software, their paradigm did not, they did not think that this software was going to be anything but a fab, fad. And ultimately, they allowed Bill Gates to what? To keep his license. That one decision ultimately turned Bill Gates into a billionaire. Another example, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs never wanted to start a company. He took his idea to Atari and also Hewlett Packard. Um, Wojciak was working at Hewlett Packard. He was working at Atari. Between them, they stole the parts in order to build the prototype. They didn't want to do it, or maybe they stole the parts after. So they were they were so frustrated that they didn't want to do it that they ended up just stealing the parts. I don't know. I don't know the story there, but I know they did, you know, acquire the parts. So, you know, again, why? Because both the executives at Hewlett Packard and Atari did not see the paradigm. They were innovators, or you know, or, or Jobs was an innovator. And he saw the paradigm they did and they wouldn't back it. And he, ultimately, he created the PC market. So it's that simple. So this is the innovation, the paradigm, uh, the law of paradigm diffusion.